gosh, look how pale I am. I look like a a vampire has come along and sucked all the blood out of me. Two hours of sleep, night from hell. I can't, I can't go on like this. Whatever is happening to me at night, whatever is preventing the sleep is killing me. And probably that is the Chiari malformation. My body doesn't want to breathe. It's, it feels like it takes a lot of labor for my body to breathe. Like it takes effort to just sit here and breathe. In the 1980s, when I was, um, I was taking this progressive relaxation breathing class with a group of adults in the 80s, and I knew something was different and wrong, and I knew something was different than different with my breathing compared to everybody else and we were doing learning different relaxation breathing techniques and um you know the how that works is you hold your breath for a certain amount of time and it induces relaxation you know long you know slow inhales and hold your breath and then long exhales and hold your breath and different techniques like that and what i noticed is everybody else was cool with it but for me i i would have to hold my breath for or, or i i could hold my breath for like twice as long as everybody else and it would take me like I don't know like longer to induce that um, relaxation and um, it's like and uh, the person running the program uh, was a nurse, and there's there's something about the ability if someone has the ability to hold their breath for a super super long time, that's it's either a really good thing, <laughs> and they're they're really strong and healthy and have you know lung capacity and they're really healthy like a scuba diver could you know and they can hold their breath for twice as long under the water or it's an indication that something is really wrong so it's one or the other if there's if you can hold your breath for an insane amount of time you're either super really it's super healthy or something is wrong and um, when I mentioned this, she, the person, the nurse looked concerned, like I knew her and she looked at me like, like kind of, uh oh, like, and then kind of went, oh yeah, it's probably a sign that you're young and healthy. No, it, it actually was an alarm an alarm bell, you know, like something's not okay here. And I guess in retrospect, now that I am, I've gotten 
educated and I'm off all the medications that I was on, I guess now the, the question looking back is, was I suffering from respiratory depression, slow, shallow, insufficient breathing from the medications that they were, the anxiety medication that I was on and the sleeping pills that they had me on or was I suffering from respiratory depression from um, my brain condition, Chiari malformation? And here I am now, um, and it's it's been a long ass, dirty drag them out, shooting back and forth. Long ass, ugly fight, fight, fight for health care here in Canada. I don't understand why. It's been just a long, dirty, dragged out battle for my life. And I had to get off all the medications I was on to figure out what's wrong with my health to get my brain back because I was drugged up and didn't realize or understand that the drugs were absolutely affecting me. And I had to start to figure out what is really wrong with my health and fight, fight for my life. And during that process, Waiting off the two sleep medications, I was horrifically injured and almost killed. And the battle with the healthcare system, the battle with medical providers has just been unbelievable. And victim blaming and doctors not understanding how to get me off these two medications. I got severely injured. I am off, off of one of the, I, I'm not on any medications anymore except for thyroid. I'm five years, uh, maybe almost six years, eight, almost six years off of one of the sleep medications and almost four years off the other one. No five years off the other other one 19 whatever so I'm years off these medications and really fighting to breathe fighting to sleep I mean I had two hours of sleep last night and I'm really ill and it's hard to breathe and and you gotta wonder um, you know, the abandonment from the healthcare system, doctors refusing to see me, um, the reality of the situation and the narrative that doctors create in your medical records can be from black to white, completely, complete different stories. And sadly and unfortunately, every doctor out there who gets your referral gets referrals for you. Read that false narrative and they never hear from you. So most often when... when there's been a long dragged out fight, dirty fight like this. And doctors have been wrong again and again. There's a, a serious false narrative in your medical records. And doctors read all of, all of that falsehood. And they're not hearing your side ever. They're not asking you and... Um, they're never hearing your side. So they're reading trash about you. 
they're reading this false narrative. And I could tell you examples over and over again. And if doctors knew the truth, if doctors heard your side, they would accept your referrals. But what they're doing is they're reading the, all the bullshit from other doctors that have made honest mistakes. They've made mistakes patient profiling. They've made mistakes misdiagnosing. They're embarrassed by their mistakes. They're angry because of the mistakes they've made. They don't want people to know. So they will write falsehoods about what happened. And that those stories, those falsehoods in all these medical records, in your medical record, that you cannot see these, these comments, they accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And then there's this, there's this nasty, untrue narrative about you and your referral will be denied. Your referrals to different specialties will be denied. And once you figure it out and it's all, you know, it all feels like a game. It feels like, um, and it's, it is unjust. One doctor is embarrassed because he 100% uh, misdiagnoses you. He thinks, you know, he, he doesn't believe that you're in medical crisis. And then you prove him wrong in, in the hospital. And, and then you're asking for test results. He, they don't want to provide you with the test results because now you can prove that you were right. So that was a fight to get the test results. And someone told me how to, directed me to how to write a letter to fight for the, fight for a copy of the results because he refused to give me a copy and uh, minimized the test results and left out all the pertinent information to the family doctor, which would indicate how ill I really was. So the family doctor fired me. The family doctor, you know, let go of me. And I was done with him too, because the family doctor was patient profiling me because the specialist was patient profiling me. The family doctor was telling me that nothing was wrong because the specialist was not being forthcoming with how sick I was. And he was trying to cover up how sick I was because he was embarrassed because he misdiagnosed me. But the thing is, none of that is ever rectified in your, in our medical records. You can't have that changed. And you might think, oh, yes, you can. No, you can't. All that original stuff is, they want to paint it out like, you know, God forbid anybody finds out that they're making mistakes, that they're patient profiling. So guess what? All my referrals to all the specialists in that specialty, all of the referrals were refused over and over and over again, like 10, 12 different referrals, all refused because this guy was covering up that he failed me and misdiagnosed me. 100% didn't believe me when I was in absolute medical crisis. And this happens over and over and over again with different providers. When they screw up, they can't admit it. And your health is being destroyed because of these, you know, it's triangulation. These negative comments in, your, in our medical record 
Doctors are being turned against you before they even meet you because of the negative comments from previous providers that have that are embarrassed because they screwed up, they made a mistake. So on paper, it looks like you're well when you're not because they're too embarrassed. So here I am. I My body doesn't want to breathe. I don't sleep. Um, I had two hours of sleep. I could collapse. And I'm... My life is completely gone. The fight for healthcare has been decades long. And so why am I sitting here and not breathing, struggling to breathe? Why? Is it the Chiari malformation? Or is it serious damage from medications they were prescribing me? Both, probably. And serious damage to my sinuses. Do I need the Chiari malformation surgery, the brain surgery, for my brain condition, my brain herniation? Is that why I'm not sleeping? Probably. But, you know, when I see neurosurgeons... These other characters in the healthcare system, they're not supporting me on paper because there's so much covering up from the errors that they've made. My hypoventilation continues to be undiagnosed because they don't want to face that. They don't want to diagnose that. Um, retaining carbon dioxide... Um, no one wants to take this, you know, further. Or could it be that we don't have the expertise here? I don't know. Like to test the diaphragm and um, they refuse to test my breathing during the day, which would prove that I have hypoventilation syndrome, shallow, insufficient breathing I struggle with my oxygen. Nobody want they won't. You don't have to treat what you refuse to diagnose. If you pretend it's not happening, you don't have to treat it. My family doctor would just refuse to put the oximeter on. If you if you refuse to acknowledge something, it doesn't exist. You don't have to treat it. So where do I go? Um, someone has contacted me interested in my story. They want to try to help me. How do I even explain? How do I begin to explain this nightmare in the Canadian system? How do I explain? I fought for a trach for over three years. I was sleeping upright. I fought for a trach because it might might have been easier to obtain than uh, the Chiari malformation brain surgery. But they refused, and I fought hard for years. They've refused. For a couple years, these specialists refused to tell me that Saskatchewan doesn't, or here... No, I think Saskatchewan doesn't have the equipment in the hospital to do the test I need to determine if I need a trach. So no one was willing to tell me that, that I needed to travel. But I can't travel. I'm too sick. How do you travel when you, you've had two hours of sleep? Like, and I don't have money to travel. I don't have the resources to travel to try to get health care. 
I am fighting for, I want the brain surgery, but it's taken till now for me to realize that these other doctors in respirology and stuff are supposed to be supporting me to get this surgery to there's so much gaslighting there's there is gaslighting from the whole CPAP the whole that whole mess right from the word go there's ga gaslighting every step of the way one of the ways was I was sent home with this CPAP machine in medical crisis I believe I absolutely 100% believe that I was in respiratory failure and uh, oh, I gotta go. Someone's on the phone.